Hey guys, welcome back to the Cure Tutoring YouTube channel. My name is TL, and today I'm going to be going over practice test number 10, calculator grading questions. I wanted to make this video so you guys can see some of the approaches that I take when answering these questions, uh, how some of these questions don't even need a calculator, and how fast I move through these. Now before we begin, if you're interested in receiving free tutoring for the SAT, ACT, AP, IB, general high school topics, or general language exams, feel free to sign up using the link in the description and we will confirm your eligibility. We're also looking for tutors, so if you're interested in receiving community service hours, feel free to sign up using our website. All right, let's begin. Lynn has $8 to spend on apples and oranges. Apples cost 65 cents each and oranges cost 75 cents each. If there's no tax on this purchase and she buys five apples, what is the maximum number of oranges she can buy? So in total, what she has is $8. So let's write that down. Total $8. And the amount of uh, the cost for the apples is going to be five times 65 cents. Since she buys five of them, and each of them costs 65 cents each. And that's going to be $3.25. So now we subtract this. So that's going to be $8 minus 3.25 is equal to 4.75. And let's divide this by 0 0.75 dollars uh, per orange. And we get around six and one third. So the question asks, what is the maximum number of whole number oranges that she can buy? So we are just going to round it down to six oranges. In the triangle above A is equal to 34, what is the value of B plus C? So recall that in a triangle, all the angles add up to 180 degrees. If A is 34, then it's going to be 180 minus 34 degrees, which would just be 146 degrees. And then B and C would have to add up to 146. If the mean of the five numbers above is 1600, then what is the value of x? So recall that the mean, or otherwise known as the average, is going to be the sum of the numbers divided by how many numbers there are, so number of numbers. So here we have five numbers, and 700 plus 1200 plus 1600 plus 2000 plus this number x that we don't know is equal to 1600. So now let's multiply that by 5 in order to get rid of this denominator. So 700 plus 1200 plus 1600 plus 2000 plus x is equal to 8000. So then we get minus 2000, that's 6000. Minus 1900, that's going to be uh, 1... That's going to be 4,100 minus 1,600 again. That's going to be 2,500. So x is equal to 2,500. The relationship between x and y can be written as y is equal to mx, where m is constant. If y is equal to 17 when x is equal to a, then what is the value of y when x is equal to 2a? So let's look at the relationship between y and x. If m is a constant, we already know that's not going to change. So we don't really need to worry about m. But we do know that if this side increases by 2 times, which is represented by 2a, then this is going to increase by 2 times also. So if y is equal to 17 when x is equal to a, when we multiply x by 2, y goes up by 2. So let's multiply y when x is equal to a by 2. And 34 is our answer. In the equation above, a and b are constants. If the equation has infinitely many solutions for x, then what is the value of b? So for the equation to have infinitely many solutions, it must be the same uh, equation. So ax plus ab is equal to 4x plus 10. I just distributed. Then we know that a is equal to 4, since the x terms would have to match up. So a is equal to 4. So let's put that in for right here. So that'd be 4b is equal to 10, because then we associate the b term with the constant. So b is equal to 10 over 4. 
In the xy plane, a line that is the equation y is equal to c for some constant c intersects the parabola at exactly one point. If the parabola has the equation y is equal to negative x plus 5x, then what is the value of c? So remember that a parabola is symmetrical in a shape. And since we have a negative sign, it's going to be a downward facing parabola. So let me just draw that right now. Uh, so if I factor out an x, a negative x, let's say that, um, a negative x, and then we have x minus 5 right here. So if you distribute it, that would be negative, two, negative x squared and plus 5. So I just factored out this x. Now, this means that we have a downward facing parabola. And we already have the roots. This is going to be x is equal to 0, x is equal to 5. So my drawing is terrible, but this is pretty much what the parabola would look like. Down, down. So we have uh, x is equal to 0 over here, and x is equal to 5 over here. So let's figure out where this line is going to be. We have the line y is equal to c. and we want C, or the line, to intersect at exactly one point. So in a parabola, if we were to take y is equal to C and put it down here, that would be two intersections, one right here and one right here, which is not good. Now, the place where the parabola intersects with a line at only one point would be at the vertex. So in this case, since it's a downward facing parabola, the vertex would be in the first quadrant, um, and it would be somewhere around here. But the vertex is going to be in the middle between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 5 because the parabola is symmetrical in its shape. So x is equal to 2.5. And let's plug that in. So 2.5 squared with the negative sign at the beginning plus 5 times 2.5. Plugging this into my calculator, I get 6.25. And that's my final answer. If you can't write this on the exam, if you can't write this on an exam, it's just going to be 25 over 4. The peregrine falcon can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour while diving to catch prey, making it the fastest animal alive on a planet when in a dive. What is the peregrine falcon's maximum speed while diving to catch prey in feet per second? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So let's convert this into feet. So we have 200 miles per hour times 52 80 feet per mile. So what does this do to the terms? So this mile in the unit would just cancel out with that one, and we're just left with feet per hour. So then we have 200 times 5280, and that's going to be a really large number, 1056. Uh, and that would be a million million fifty six thousand all right so now what we need to do is divide it by the number of seconds that are in an hour so we have 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour so we have 3600 as our denominator so we have feet per hour but now we have 3600 seconds per hour so these two cancel out, and we're just left with feet per second. Now what we're left with is 293.33, but it says round to the nearest whole number, so it's just going to be 293 seconds. If a peregrine falcon dove its maximum speed for half a mile to catch prey, how many seconds would the dive take? So we know that the peregrine falcon dives at 200 miles per hour, so let's write that down. We can also write it like this, 200 miles every hour and then we set up a proportion and so we set up a proportion to figure out how many hours it would take to dive half a mile so that'd be 0.5 miles and the bottom hour is what we're trying to find out so let's call that x so 200 x is equal to 0.5 so using cross multiplication what we need to do is solve for x so we have 0.5 is equal to 200x, and x is equal to 0.5 over 200. Well, we're not done with that, because that's only 
how many hours it would take, and we need to still multiply by the number of seconds in an hour. And remember that we solved for it before, 3600. So I'm just going to use the same factor, times 3600 at the end. So if we just plug this into a calculator, what we should get is 0.5 over 200 times 3600. And that would be 9 seconds, x is equal to 9 seconds. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in receiving free tutoring or becoming a tutor, use the link in the description and we'll check your eligibility. That's all I have for today, and I'll see you guys next time.